Hey everyone, welcome to this radio video and today we're going to have a little talk about 10 meter or 28 megahertz beacons. Uh, why they are there and what is the use of these beacons. Um, the 10 meter amateur radio band you've probably heard on a few of my videos is one of my favorite bands when it's open. I love to listen to very long distance propagation on, and stations on this band. And um, one of the interesting features of the 10 meter amateur band is that from 28.140 to 28.300, there's a number of beacons. And that's really nice because um, you have on this frequency band different beacons from all around the world that operate most of the time 24 hours a day some are not 24 but it depends on the the, uh, the beacon and they are they are operated by amateur radio stations or sometimes amateur radio clubs and the reason why beacons exist is to give you an idea of propagation on the 28 megahertz frequency so for example I just posted three videos one showing um, there's a, a beacon in Florida that I received, one showing a beacon in Oslo, Norway, which is a first for me, and another one with uh, an Italian beacon. So what can I um, get of information from there is that these beacons, first of all, are very low powered, often only one, two, three watts, some five, 10 or 20, uh, but usually 20 watts 25 watts is pretty much the maximum on beacons most of the time so they're very very weak most of the time they're um, you know not very powerful but it's surprising what you can hear on 10 meters with only one watt sometimes so the information I get from these beacons is that I can expect if I tune around 28 megahertz for amateur radio stations to hear Europe since I've heard uh, Norway and Italy and I can expect to hear uh, stations from the south of the United States because I heard one in uh, Florida. I also heard one in Texas that I did not post because of the high noise that I had on it. But uh, it means that propagation on 28 megahertz is open to Europe and to the south of the United States. So that's what you can use these beacons for. You're wondering what part of the world is received on 28 megahertz. Why not tune around? There's a lot of beacons. If I just tune around in CW mode, or if you don't have CW, just tune in a single sideband and start tuning around. And you'll notice that there are beacons. My Italian beacon was here on 173 a little earlier. So you'll hear basically these little Morse code stations sending out. Like this. And what you want to do is ID the uh, stations. So for example, when they send da 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 that's V V V V means we're just sending out a call. And then you'll have from or it's going to be in Morse code D E D and then the call letters so you can actually listen to those and by the call letters check what station they are now where do you get these um, in this information of what station it is uh, two great lists that I have that pretty much have all the information needed. I will be posting the uh, links in the video uh, with my notes here in the video. Uh, two websites. One is uh, G3 USF's worldwide list of HF beacons uh, that has typically beacons from uh, different all the different amateur radio bands. And uh, another one is the 10 meter the uh, 10 meter beacon list that's available so uh, check with the notes you will see the links you just have to click uh, or copy and paste the link and you'll have the list of frequencies and beacons so you can ID 
Beacons are also a great, great way to learn your Morse code. Since they are in the Morse code, you'll have to understand uh, what the letters are or the numbers are. So to understand the call letters, you'll have to uh, brush out on your Morse code. What's cool with this is that beacons repeat the same message over and over and over again. So if you miss it out the first time, just listen again. It's, it sends basically their call letters all the time. So, since the 10 meter amateur radio band is open mostly daytimes, it's probably only or mostly in the daytime you'll hear beacons. But don't, uh, you know, stop because it's sunset or it's evening. Um, even at, you know, in the middle of the night, you should just by curiosity go and check it out because there are uh, some interesting propagation phenomenon on 10 meters, including e skip for sporadic e skip which is something that can happen right in the middle of the night, so you can have open 10 meter band at midnight. Um, so it's really, really something to check for. And uh, basically, if you hear um, an example, if, if the only beacons you hear are from um, the United States, well, you know that um, propagation to the United States or North America probably is open. If the only beacons you hear are European, well, propagation is open to Europe, which means that if you start tuning higher in frequency and listen to amateur radio stations uh, in upper sideband, for example, you can expect to hear stations from these areas. Beacons are also fun to log because you can actually hear, uh, you know, uh, very weak signals. For example, I'm very proud of what I received today, the uh, Oslo Norway beacon. Uh, I mean 15 watts from Oslo, Norway on uh, 10 meter. This is really amazing. Uh, I'm still a little shocked at that uh, reception that I did. So tune around and uh, even if you have a portable radio with just a little, you know, um, telescopic antenna, tune around, you will hear beacons as long as your noise level is not too high on the 10 meter amateur radio band. On 28 megahertz. So tune between 28 dot 140 to 28.300 and uh, put your radio in single sideband SSB or if you have a radio that supports CW you can put it on CW and listen to these beacons and have an idea of uh, you know where they are and what propagation looks like on 28 megahertz. So I hope it uh, gave you an idea of what they are. They're mostly, you know, propagation. So um, they're put there so that everybody knows what region of the world is open at a certain time on 28 megahertz. So thanks for watching 73.